Hello, we've been uh, doing some studies this week about uh, the most important week in the history of the world. Um, a lot of people call this Holy Week, but um, I, I would like to call it the most important week in the history of the world. Um, and the Gospels focus on this week. In fact, there's more material in the four Gospels about the last week of Jesus' life than, than everything else. Uh, scholars have called um, the Gospels, have described them as, as um, stories of um, the cross with long introductions because so much focus is on that last week started uh, the video with a picture in my study Bible of the temple area during Jesus's day. And hopefully you can see what a gigantic area it was. And so much of the week is focused around that area. Um, I had planned on, on uh, putting this video up uh, last evening and didn't get to it. Uh, but we're going to talk in this briefer video about the events of Monday of this most important week. And uh, then uh, later today, post a longer video to talk about the events of Tuesday, uh, which we have a lot more text about in the Gospels, what goes on on Tuesday. But I thought uh, since it's been a couple of days, um, very quickly, we would review where we've been so far. We started out on the previous Friday and Saturday, the previous weekend, um, where Jesus came toward Jerusalem. He arrived in Bethany, where he had friends, where most evenings of this week he stays the night in Bethany. He leaves Jerusalem after long days in the city and then stays with Mary and Martha and Lazarus in Bethany. Um, we, we noticed, uh, and all this is from John chapter 12, uh, the story where Mary anoints Jesus and um, had the little controversy with Judas who's upset that such expensive ointment has been wasted in such a way. And we find out uh, that he's not really concerned about money for the poor, but uh, he was a thief. And... Um, was jealous over that, that money that could have been in the treasury that he controlled. And um, also saw how crowds are building to see Jesus there in John chapter 12. All that happened six days, John tells us, before the Passover. Then we get to the next day, Sunday, and uh, on Sunday Jesus enters Jerusalem. A lot of times that's called the triumphal entry. You can read about that story in all four of the Gospels. It's one of the events that all four Gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all comment on and describe. And then we also noticed from John chapter 12 something that happened on Sunday uh, where there was this group of Gentiles who asked to see Jesus. And then Jesus said some things um, that that his disciples, and if the Gentiles were there, uh, the Gentiles didn't likely understand at the time. We talked a little bit about that Sunday evening. That That's recorded just in John chapter 12. Uh, we noted after Jesus rode into the city on a donkey, he uh, went up to the temple, he looked around, and then he went back to Bethany for uh, um, Sunday night into Monday. Um, and then that, that gets us to the events of Monday. Um, Matthew and Mark um, both tell the story of how as Jesus is coming into the city with his disciples uh, on the way to the temple, that he encounters a fig tree. This fig tree appeared to be a normal fig tree, but upon further closer inspection, it was discovered that it had no fruit on it. There were no figs. Jesus then does a strange thing. He curses the fig tree. He says, um, may no fruit ever come from you again. This is 
an enacted parable, we might say. Um, the only time that I know of where Jesus used his power uh, to harm something, uh, he harms this fig tree. Uh, they won't realize that until the next day. But um, he curses the fig tree on Monday. And uh, this is probably another one of those things where the guys didn't get it uh, until they reflected back on it later. Uh, but it is an enacted parable. He is cursing something that is not bearing fruit. He's about to go up into the temple. Uh, we can read about this in Matthew chapter 21 and in, in Mark chapter 11. He's about to go up into the temple, which was supposed to be a very fruitful place. The fruit that was supposed to come from the temple was prayer. But he's going to go up there and not see a lot of prayer. He's going to see a lot of business. In fact, the type of business that was ripping people off, that was stealing from people. Um, the, the, the courtyards of the temple uh, at Passover time was a huge market and, and people were being uh, stolen from by the officials, people who had come to worship uh, and needed to exchange their money or uh, buy an animal to offer in sacrifice were being ripped off, frankly. And, and Jesus does not see it as a place of prayer. It's not bearing the fruit it's supposed to bear, you see. And so Jesus, by cursing the fig tree, um, illustrates what he's going to see up in the temple. Um, the fig tree had no figs, and the temple had no prayer. And Jesus uh, condemns both. In fact, Jesus is going to do more than condemn what's going on in the temple. He's going to drive the money changers out, forming a whip and chasing them out. He cleanses or clears the temple. This is not the first time that Jesus has done this. If you read the Gospels carefully, John tells us that um, Jesus did this near the beginning of his ministry. So um, three years Three and a half years before this, Jesus had already done this in the temple. He, he also does it here in the last week of his life on Monday. And uh, that's, uh, you know, an, an amazing event and, and a, a sign of power. We can read about the cleansing of the temple, this particular one, in uh, Matthew 21, in Mark 11, and in Luke chapter 19. Now, Mark is the one who clues us in to when this happened, that it happened on Monday of the last week. Uh, just to make a little comment on this, uh, Matthew, almost, as you read his account, it, he almost makes it sound like this, this happened on um, Sunday. Uh, Matthew doesn't put things in strict chronological order uh, with these days early days of the last week. And that's not a criticism of Matthew. Matthew is an inspired writer, just like all the rest. But frankly, the ancient writers uh, weren't always concerned about strict chronological order. They had other purposes. The spirit through them had other purposes in the way they arranged their material. So if you're not careful when you read Matthew, you might see think you see a contradiction with Mark. There really is no contradiction. Mark is giving us the good chronological order that this happened on Monday. Matthew is, is aiming at another purpose. They both tell the same story, uh, just one is a little more specific than the other. Then if you go over and read Luke's account in chapter 19, he's the briefest of the three, and he's not real specific about when it happened. But Mark uh, is pretty clear in chapter 11 that this happens on Monday of the last week. And uh, John does not tell this particular story. Remember, he again uh, puts the cleansing of the temple at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Uh, some people suggest that um, that Marcus or that John is telling the exact same story, just way out of order. I don't think that's correct. I, I believe Jesus actually did this twice. John tells us about the one 
uh, at the beginning of the, the ministry of Jesus, and the other three tell us the one that happens in this last week. Well, uh, Mark also, in chapter 11, verse 19, gives us the little note that at the end of the day, this day that he spent in Jerusalem, he goes back to Bethany, returns to Bethany with the twelve. And so that's, again, the pattern that we see, at least in the first half of this week. And uh, that's what we have in the, in the text about the events of Monday. Um, some really interesting and um, powerful things that, that take place on Monday of the last week. Again, the next uh, broadcast that we make a little bit later today will concern the events of Tuesday. Now, on Tuesday, uh, there's a lot more material. It'll be interesting to see um, what I can express in a, in a video broadcast of reasonable length. Uh, but we have a lot of text uh, about the events of Tuesday. Tuesday is full of controversy and debate and questions. And uh, we'll re at least review that material in, in the next broadcast. But I hope you're enjoying this and, and hope that made some sense, um, uh, what we're talking about on, on the events of Monday. Uh, they were certainly important. Hope you're having a good day, and we will see you a bit later. God bless.